Hello everybody, welcome to GT Planet and welcome to another one of our tuning videos here on our YouTube channel. My name is Chaz Dracott, I'm the lead video producer at GT Planet and I'm excited to be back on your screens once again with another one of these tuning videos that I've enjoyed massively so far. I've really enjoyed recording these and editing them and driving some fantastic cars and obviously becoming more endeared to said cars and falling in love with them even more. And that's what tuning is all about in Gran Turismo 7. Not only does it make your car more competitive and make races a little bit easier for you and it gives you that relationship relationship with the cars it's great it really is what we're doing today is taking on the world touring car 600 at grand valley the fictional grand valley circuit i really like this place and i was hoping that there was a sort of circumstance where we could record one of these tuning videos for this circuit we're going to be in the world touring car 600 like i said so 600 performance points is going to be key we're going to go back to our garage though and i'm going to show you what car we're going to be playing with today i'm pretty sure i won this a while ago However, it's an absolute fan favourite, the Mitsubishi GTO Twin Turbo from 1991. We've got it in the base colour that is passion red, and it is an absolute superstar. Not the most exciting thing to look at on the outside, but still a real retro piece of kit in this modern age. A massive, massive engine up front, 3 litre V6, and of course twin turbocharged as well. And we can get a lot of power and performance out of a car like this. It is currently sat at 473 performance points. We're going to get it all the way up to nearly 600. We're going to be using one of Priano's tunes today. Uh, we first used one of his setups in this video to begin this series when we did the Evo 3 and it was amazing. And we're going to be checking out one of his tunes again today. Uh, we've currently got on screen this one which I mean the livery on this looks fantastic it has to be said but as you can see up here we're not going to go for a wide body it's going to be 16 inch rims with wide offset and then we're going to have all of these configurations for the aerodynamics and he says it's actually excellent for the Tokyo rain event as well so I might actually have to give it a try at that as well because I really like that event it's a very big challenge but you can see all the wonderful settings and all of the details here that we're going to go through and what we're going to do first off, though, is take the car into the race, see how it gets on in its standard guise, so I can get an idea of how it drives. Then we're going to come and change all this stuff, put all the parts on it, and then we'll obviously jump back in and see what the performance difference is like. Now, in this race, you do face off against some pretty meaty opponents, specifically that Blajan Porsche as well. And there is an RX-7 in the middle of the field, and also a Supra. Yeah, Igor Fraga's Black Supra is pretty savage as well. Now, you get 92 grand for winning this race, so it's not bad at all. Obviously, in terms of the investment we're going to make in this race, we may lose out money, but if you can repeat the race and win it again and again, why not? The car is on comfort softs. Yay! Can't wait to see how this handles with that big heavy lump up front. 285 horsepower though, so it's no slouch. Okay, we'll go on board and we'll jump behind the wheel. We've got that retro, very orange lit dashboard on the brakes for the first time. Okay, it brakes well. Ooh, very understeery on the throttle. With these four-wheel drive, I forgot to check. Pretty sure it's four-wheel drive, isn't it? It's very quickly going off the clock on the dash. 180 k's. I'm so scared of turning. Oh, it's an understeery pig. It feels very heavy. Like, it feels really heavy. It feels like a bus. Like, I'm hard on the brakes there, and it barely slowed down. Big kick of understeer. Look how much lock I'm using. Gear changes are quite quick, which is not... Wow, you've got to be so careful dabbing the brakes. Change down, Chaz. Yeah, you've got to be so careful dabbing the brakes because it points the nose in, but the car stays travelling in the same direction. Oh, dear. I know there's a lot of fans of these cars. I'm a big fan of a GCO Twin Turbo, but it's a shed. <laughs> it's a proper shed. Come on. You've just got to... It's one of those cars where you have to guide it round a corner with the throttle and the brakes like I'm scared of putting lock on you get to a point with the lock and then it starts to go straight on rather than helping it turn more but look how quickly it's off the clock there look 160 we're in third gear we're gonna hit 180 no we're not because I'm too scared of this corner goes off the clock very quickly just gotta be hesitant with it I don't even think we're gonna overtake anybody I mean, let's not forget, we're over 100 performance points off what the hard limit is in this race. Let's see what speed we can get up to down the start-finish straight before we inevitably crash at turn one. It's not bad at high-speed stuff. Like, that felt great there. Goodness me. 
120 mile an hour, it's only creeping up to 125. Guide it in. Brake. I said brake. Oh, you sausage. <laughs> there was an inkling of fun there. Did you did you sense that? Yep. Easy does it. Oh god. Right, stop. Stop. <laughs> I feel we're kind of catching the people in front. I'm not sure. Oh, it's a long third gear. A very short second gear. Although, when I say lot, I say short second gear, and it does 70 mile an hour, the understeer is just, yeah, you can't get over it, you can't get by it. I feel that somehow we're still catching the cars in front, though. That change from second to third really bogs it down. I'm interested to see what we do with the gear ratios in the faster version of it. Because you change down to second, and you have to expect to see the valves dancing around on the bonnet in front of you. I don't know what this is. But then you go up to third and it's like, eh, no way up. Well, I was expecting the prod of it to be a bit more prominent. I was expecting it to uh, be a lot faster in a straight line and catch up, but the gear ratios are what lets it down. Catching a car in front, but not by much. It's actually getting away at this section. It's got a horrible four wheel drift oh, about it. Let's not destroy the engine by changing down too early, Chaz. <laughs> Go on. Seems like that's maybe a way to get it to, uh, to actually be quick. Got to over-rotate it on the brakes. It's just... <laughs> just <laughs> on the throttle. <laughs> it's an interesting car to drive, though, because one minute it's understeery as hell, and then it oversteers, then it understeers. Mid-corner it's going, like, it, there's waves to it turning around the corner, if that makes sense. The front end does things in notches. Oh, that's deep. Yeah, I've gone way too deep. Oh, we've put her in a wall. It's a classic in this day and age, this car, Chaz. Treat you with respect, you idiot. To be fair, even the Audi R8 that Mr. Grady is driving in front of us is considered a classic now. How old's that? 17 years old? There we go. We have overtaken somebody. Or have we? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the gear ratios, isn't it? It's got a decent amount of prod, but it's just the way in which it uses it is just so miserable. Oh, hello. Soaring at the wheel like an idiot that definitely doesn't know how to handle a car. Stop. Oi! Did he just hit me? Get off. It's going down the inside here. Hey! Cut back. <laughs> Mugged. Oh, I think there was a bit of contact there. My bad. Right, something in my brain has just told me that I'm just going to use all the lock in the world and just see how the car... No. I was going to say responds. It just doesn't. Like, <laughs> I'm using all the lock. I'm very excited to see what this car is like when we've tuned it up. And that's not based on the fact that it's fast now. It's based on the fact that it's absolutely terrible. But, only in this circumstance, you know, compared to other cars, it might be fantastic. But I'm really intrigued to see what monster we can turn this into. And obviously what monster Priano has turned it into as well. Because his setup for that Mitsubishi Evo at the start of this series was great fun. If you haven't watched any of the previous videos, by the way, do go back and watch them. You will really enjoy them. Much like I have. Like I said earlier, I've recorded these and had such a good time doing it. It really is a great way to just... I don't know, just find yourself a little project within the game, you know. Oh my goodness me. Well, we're having an accident because Chaz is talking too much. How have we not hit anything? But it really prolongs the life of a game, you know. You find yourself a race that, yeah, sure, you don't win all the money in the world for doing, but find one that's got a decent performance points limit, like 600 or maybe 700, but usually at that point you're using... GT4 cars or Group 4 cars but then again, you know, you can still tune a car to that point and just try and give it a go in a road car that you've already got or one that you've not touched that's just sort of sitting there in your garage, you know really does make you develop that relationship with the cars and it makes you appreciate them a lot more and you go on this sort of journey with them and seeing how they improve and behave and I have to point out, obviously, that Priano's tunes are from our wonderful 
GT Planet forums. That is the point behind this, is that we've got so many great, talented car tuners on the forums that really know what they're doing with these machines, and they put the time and effort in to share those setups with other users on there, and the setups are free, free to use. They've put every detail on the forums for you to copy. You've just got to get hold of the car and obviously have the money in-game, but it takes out a lot of the guesswork for those like me that don't have experience in setting up cars and knowing the perfect mechanical intricacies underneath that make them behave the way they do. Race is finished for our leaders. We've overtaken one car. Part of me thinks we could have maybe got ahead of Gallo in the NSX. Oh, there's a wall there, Chaz. I didn't actually hit it. Oh, we're going to beat Gallo. Or are we? No. Bye-bye. <laughs> so it's 15th place <laughs> for the GTO Twin Turbo. Not the most enthralling thing to drive the first time. However, like I've said, that's going to make it all the more exciting when we tune it up and turn it into a monster now. So let's go back, buy the parts, and then we'll set this thing up. Right then, this time, I promise, I'm going to get the setup open on my left screen. I will not miss anything this time. I'm, I'm definitely going to not miss a thing, okay? So, we're going to start on the left-hand side on this image that I'm going to put on the screen right now. You can see we need sports hard tyres. That is going to be the first thing we're going to buy. We're going to do this in order, not from tab to tab at the top along here. We're just going to buy it component at a time, and I'm not going to skip past anything. So, tyres. Sports hards, where do we get those? We get them in... Wait, they're literally in the first tab that I skipped past. Brilliant. Okay, two and a half grand, sports hard tires. Fully customizable suspension is in the... <laughs> Racing tab. I'm so sorry. Fully customizable differential, LSD, if I can say it properly, is in the semi-racing tab. We also need a torque vectoring center differential as well, which is in the racing tab just there for 12 and a half grand. Downforce we come on to a little bit later because we do that in GT Auto. We change that in there when we change the bumpers and things, so we can come to that a little bit later. Uh, there's an ECU that we need to get as well. I think that's... no, it's not an extreme. It is in semi-racing. We need to add ballast which I think is in racing. No, I need to stop pretending I know where these things are. So ballast and power restrictor are both in the semi-racing. No, they're not. It's club sports. <laughs> uh, why does Jordan pay me? So that's the ballast and power restrictor board. Both of those come into play again a little bit later. Uh, we need a fully customizable racing transmission. That's fully customizable manual transmission. Don't get the two confused. The racing transmission is so important because it's that extra quick gear change compared to the just standard manual one. We need a high RPM turbocharger. That excites me greatly. I believe that's in, yep, semi-racing. No anti-lag system though, but a racing intercooler. Don't forget, that's the sports intercooler. We want the racing one. We also want the racing air filter. And I believe the racing exhaust. Yes, we do. Racing exhaust manifold as well. Racing slotted discs. So it's actually going to stop now, which will be nice. And racing brake pads as well. So plenty of motorsport parts going underneath. It's 474 horsepower now. We need a brake balance controller, which is just 1500 credits. Racing clutch and flywheel from the same page as well, from the racing tab. And carbon propeller shaft, which is, I think, is that not? Oh, I think it's a bit further back. Oh, wow, it's all the way over in Ultimate, so never mind, ignore me. Okay, there's a few more parts for the engine itself, rather than adding other components. Uh, we've got a stroke up, which is installed, as well as engine balance tuning right next to it. We then need a high lift camshaft, which I think is... No, clearly not where I think it is. There it is. Racing crankshaft, which is on the next page. And then we move to weight reduction. So stages one, two, and three, and increase body rigidity as well. So stage one. Stage two. And stage three. And it's in the same page there in semi-racing where you increase the body rigidity. Something that I really can't say very well. Just checking if there was anything else and it doesn't look like it so what we need to do is just go and change the body parts now in gt auto so we back out and then head down here to gt auto 
and this is where we do the car customization. So going back up a little bit on Prano's post, he's mentioned that there is no wide body, 16 inch wheels with a wide offset. Uh, we're gonna go for something like this because I always tend to put these <laughs> wheels on the car. Uh, rim width is, ooh, doesn't say about the width. I'm gonna go wide and, oh right, that's wide because you can't change it, cool. We'll put those wheels on it. Already looks like a rice mobile. Front wing is going to be B, type B. That's the carbon splitter on the front. On the sides it is B. Again, carbon little side skirts down there. Rear is ST, it says, standard, so we don't put a splitter on it. And then when it comes to wing, we go to custom. So you can basically do what you want with the wing. Quite like the low one, but mm, I like a higher wing, I do. I'm going to go for just some square end plates on that just because I think that looks cool. 1,500 credits on that. Nice. Now it looks a bit more like a race car. I've left it red as well, by the way. I haven't repainted it or put a livery on it or anything, but as you've seen on the uh, the image of Priano's tune, the livery that he's got there looks absolutely awesome. Still, that's all for personal preference and for you guys to do. Let's go into car settings then. I'll get back up the setup and we'll go through all this bit by bit then. So on the body height adjustment, you want 100 on the front. You also then want to go for 130 on the rear anti-roll bar seven and eight that's good because it felt like it wobbled around like mad earlier on like me on my way to the fridge 30 and 40 so full on the damping ratio compression on the rear uh, we then go 45 and 40 so you're actually turning the damping ratio expansion down on the rear natural frequency is 2.15 on the front and 2.50 on the rear so right in that middle point. Negative camber angle, 2.5 on the front, remaining at three on the rear. Toe is gonna stay the same. Fully customizable diff is five at the front and five at the rear, then 30 and 40. There we go. And then braking sensitivity is five and five. So you can sort of mess about on the brakes a little bit more. It's not gonna suddenly stab you. 40, 60 on the torque centering diff, then onto the next part. Downforce on the front, you want 85, so we're really cranking up the capability of that splitter. You've then got 200 on the rear, so max on the rear end. This is all about downforce here. ECU is at 100%, ballast is at 200, 200 kilos, because, of course, look at the performance points at the minute, 617 before doing any of this. Ballast positioning is 50, power restrictor 91, so we're going to be turning that down to 516 horsepower. <laughs> then we go into the manual adjustment of the gears. This is the bit that takes a bit longer. Uh, I do sometimes tend to skip past these bits, but we're going to try and do this in real time as close as possible. 2.465, so I've gone the wrong way. Good start. Uh, there you go. It's amazing how sort of intricate you can be with this sort of thing. 1.716. Then moving to 1.227, again, Chaz, wrong way. Nice. Then we've got 0 0.942. It can suddenly scroll very, very quickly and you have to catch it. That's the one thing. But then again, there's so many tiny decimal places to adjust here. It's hardly a surprise that it does want to skip on. And 0 0.746, final drives 4.095. Come on. There we go. And then on to the next part. So we go over to the right hand side. High RPM turbocharger, no anti lag, racing intercooler, racing air cleaner, and silencer and exhaust manifold, slotted discs, racing pads, normal handbrake, brake balance controller. That hasn't been changed though, interestingly. That's just been left as is. There's no change to the settings on that. A racing clutch and flywheel, carbon propeller shaft. We've then got stroke up, engine balance tuning, high lift camshaft, racing crankshaft, all three stages of weight reduction and increased body rigidity. We're going to measure the performance points and look at that, 599.68, just under that 600. Let's go back to Grand Valley, everybody. It's worth remembering we've not gone onto racing slicks here, so we've not gone onto the grippiest tyres available. Just gone onto sports hards, but it's going to make a big, big difference, I think, to how this car handles, especially with the fact we've got all that downforce and all that braking capability. We've not really got a lot to improve on here, finishing the first race in 15th place, but we've got 516 horsepower now, as opposed to the 280 odd that we had before. So, yeah, I'm excited to see what this sounds like as well. Let's jump in. 
Okay, you've piqued my interest already. Oh my god. Oh, it stopped so well. Well, that makes me happy. Big understeer from the front still. However, a little lift off, and then lift off. Goodness me! Still doesn't quite keep with the likes of the Lambo in front, though, but then again, that's over 500, 600 horsepower, is it not? At least 500 in the Huracan. But the noise! Again, the noises! Uh, excuse me. Yeah, there's big understeer still in slow corners and on throttle from that four-wheel drive system. But once it's in a straight line... Oh, listen to the whine of the gearbox. Oh, I like that. Massive improvement already, though. It's just a lot more... Come on, it's just a lot more stable. But that, that is still a problem, the understeer there. However... Oh, and the gear changes as well. The ratios are still quite long. Ratios are still very long. It just... Mm, the initial understeer is pretty painful, I must say. Through no fault of Priano, it's just the car. But I love this bit. Oh, the gear changes are beautiful. When you've gotten so used to the way it changed gear before and... Well, didn't change gear. It took four weeks to get through third gear. Brakes are good, but... It doesn't turn initially into a corner. You've got to really wait for that initial rotation. It's great on the throttle at high speed, though. Like, look at this. Oh, look at that. Old versus new in terms of Subarus. Hello. Staying in fourth gear because... Well, there goes 125 mile an hour that we were doing before. And we've still got fifth gear. It did say on uh, Prano's page, actually, in the forums, in his post, that the top speed is really good of this car. And that's why it suits the Tokyo Rain event, of course, the massive straights there that you have to contend with. It's maybe not as suited to a circuit like Grand Valley, but then again, it's going a lot better than it did before, other than my understeer. I was a bit scared to put more lock on there, as you would have seen. A lot of you will watch that back now and then realise that I stay at, like, 45 degrees of lock, and I could have put a lot more on. Fraga doesn't want to give me this place. But I've taken it. Thank you, mate. It's my favourite part of these episodes, though, getting in a car and seeing how much better it is than before. But the noise, the turbo flutters, the gearbox whine, the gear change speed. Oh, so satisfying. This is what I mean. It makes you fall in love with the cars. It makes you fall in love with driving on the game again. Because you have to remember that the, the driving experience in general is what makes games like this. Can't overlook it. Come on, Mr. Audi. You were the only car we finished ahead of before, Mr. Grady. Oh, flipping heck, I like this. Don't like the understeer so much, but... It's got that sort of four-wheel drive symptoms where it does initially pitch in but then float sideways still. It's like I said before, you change the angle the car is facing, but it still travels in the same direction. This looks like there's a bit of that going on in the F-Type. Yeah, it's very oversteering the brakes. Foot in it. Go on. I'm actually braking this time just to... Yeah, look. Look at that. It's... I'm too confident in this sort of second iteration. It really doesn't turn as well still. Look at that. The brakes are good, but it still feels heavy. So you still have to be patient with it. You can't get too excited like I clearly have. The way it gets out of a corner is phenomenal. But it's corner entry and mid-corner that's just... Yeah. There's a prime example. Still within a chance of winning this race, though. We're only six seconds off the race leader. Look at the run that we've got, even on a DB11. That's a DB11. And we are bombing it past. Don't crash, Chaz. Again. I love the sound of it going up through the gears. And down as well. The downshifts are gorgeous. Well, there's the battle for the lead ahead of us. Five seconds up the road. A little bit early going down second gear there. The 
just... <laughs> that run out of the corner is infectious. Oh, a little bit hot. Sorry. I felt like I was way too slow in there on the previous lap while I was fighting with the GTR, so tried to carry a bit more speed that time. I'm really concentrating. <laughs> I really want this GTO to do well and win the race. Well, I said earlier, didn't I, that the RX-7 and Blajan's Porsche in front of this field are going to be the cars to beat. Come on. Right, I can't ever get this corner right, it seems. Oh, we're not quite going to do it, everyone. But that is a colossal improvement from race one. Go on. Oh, so close to second place. Sure, it could do with spicing up with a livery or something, maybe some fancier wheels. But from the first car that we had to the second car, I mean, same car, but the iterations were miles apart. That's probably the biggest improvement we've seen from one car to the next in these tuning videos, I'd say. Because that was dire to begin with, and then in the end we only lost out by eight tenths of a second. And we had a spin, don't forget, we had a spin. Well, I had a spin, sorry, it's not your fault. I had a spin at turn one, and that cost me a load of time. Still did the fastest lap of the race. I'd argue that if I did that again, I'd probably win it. But for the sake of this video, it's just the one run through for now. So, <clears throat> oh good lord. Thanks once again to Priano for the fantastic setup for this car. Like I've said, try this for yourself. Just pick a car, pick a race, and get it to those performance points limits. And just enjoy it, you know. Use so many of the setups that there are on the forums. The guys have got great posts. You can access it by going to the GT Planet page, going to forums. Down there to Gran Turismo 7, there's a little sub category anyway that is Gran Turismo 7 and then it's car tuning and there's so many great posts in there and wonderful people that have put in the work for you to be able to do these for free. Hope you enjoyed the video everybody I've certainly enjoyed recording another one of these and we'll be definitely doing more of them in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to GT Planet, give us your comments your thoughts, all sorts, check us out on social media as well I've been Chaz Draycott, this has been another tuning guide on GT7 and I'll see you very soon everyone, have a good day